Hi guys, this is Paul O'Need, Assistant Strength Coach at the University of Tampa. Uh, I met Ron uh, about three years ago. He gave me my first job in strength and conditioning as an intern with him at the University of South Florida. And today I'm gonna talk to you about posterior chain strength, more specifically uh, hip dominant lower body movements. Um, with these movements, the ones I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go over the trap bar deadlift and the straight bar deadlift. And the most important thing you need to remember with these movements is the importance of a hip hinge. And the reason I prefer one over the other personally is because that one exercise forces the athlete to be in a proper hip hinge, whereas the other one can be performed in the absence of a hip hinge. Um, there's a series of videos that are gonna follow this introduction. There's gonna be one demonstrating a proper hip hinge. There'll be one demonstrating an improper hip hinge, which I'm sure all of us have seen in the weight room. Then the execution of the trap bar deadlift in an improper and a proper manner and how I like to set up for a straight bar deadlift and how it can be done in the safest manner possible. And I hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you soon. First video I'm gonna show you is a proper way to perform a hip hinge. As you can see, my knee is soft, my spine is neutral, and my head is also in a neutral position. My hips are moving independently from my knees and I'm locking up my glutes at the top. The next is an improper hip hinge. So we've all seen this in the weight room with our athletes. It's the inability to move the hips independent of the knee and an inability to stabilize the spine. So as you can see, I'm trying to push my hips back, but instead of pushing them back, I'm actually just bending my knees more. And it's very important to teach our athletes how to achieve a proper hip hinge. The trap bar deadlift often performed in an improper manner. Although it is easy to teach, it's often undercoached. So the athlete will tend to put their feet far too wide, resulting in a valgus knee position and an inability to recruit the glutes. They will also drop the hips far too low, even though they maintain a neutral spine. And this is actually a fault because it turns the movement into a knee dominant movement and it's not optimal for recruiting the glutes, the hamstrings and the back muscles. Now how to do a proper trap bar deadlift. We're gonna position the feet much more narrow under the hips pull the chest up and push the hips to the posterior. This will result in keeping the hips slightly higher and pulling through the glutes as opposed to pushing through the quads. Um, much more athletic position, much more natural for the athlete and it's optimal way to train what we're trying to train. The straight bar deadlift starts out with five steps to set up. First, you see me position my feet under my hips then I reach down and grab the bar outside of my legs. I push my hips up to tension my hamstrings. Then I pull my chest up, drop my hips and lean back. The finishing position, lock out through the glutes. Okay, oftentimes again with the deadlift, the athlete positions their feet too wide, resulting in the hands too wide, an inability to, get, to achieve a neutral spine in the bottom position. This could also be due to a hamstring inflexibility issue. And if that is the case, you can simply raise the plates off the ground and it'll reduce the need for flexibility in the hamstring. This is gonna be a bit more evident from the side position. Notice I am wearing a hat. This is for a particular reason. I want you to notice my head position. It's neutral. It's not jacked up to the ceiling and it's not pushed down to the floor. I'm pulling the bar back into my body, locking out through the glutes into a neutral position. When this is done properly, it's the most effective way to train the posterior chain. Hope the video was informative for you guys and gave you a little bit of insight into why the straight bar deadlift shouldn't be forgotten and also give you a little bit of insight into how we can train the trap bar deadlift in a more optimal manner instead of just telling our athletes to bend over and pick it up. Uh, if, you need, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, uh, paulonid at mail.usf.edu or over Facebook. Hope to hear from you guys soon. Hope you enjoyed.